Hello and welcome to another episode of History with Andy Eckert. I'm Andy Eckert. Today we are on 7th Street in Kansas City, Kansas between Ann Avenue and Armstrong Avenue at the Huron Indian Cemetery. Now it is now known as the Wyandotte National Burial Ground. The Huron Indian Cemetery was actually a fensive term that the French gave them. So it was changed officially by the government to the Wyandotte National Burial Ground. You can see here that it was named to the National Register of Historic Places in 1971. Now, there are over 90,000 places on the list of National Register. But in 2016, it was named a National Historic Landmark, the Wyandotte National Burying, Burying Ground and the Eliza Burton Conley Burial Site. And there are only about 2,500 of these. We're gonna talk about Eliza Burton Conley and we're gonna call her Lida. So she went by Lida. We are now entering sacred ground. This cemetery has been through a lot. Has been through a lot of challenges and has survived. We don't know if there are 400 buried here or there are 800 buried here because there are so many graves that are not marked or graves that we cannot read. But between the years 1895 and 1896, a man named George Conley did a survey. And I want to show you a very interesting marker that you might not expect at a Native American burial ground. Here it says, in service to their country, the William E. Conley survey of 1895 to 1896 indicates a large grave in this area by tradition. Union dead were buried in this part of the Huron Indian Cemetery following the Battle of Westport, October 21st through 23rd, 1864. Okay, now, the Native Americans, the Wyandotte tribe, was still here and active, very active, in 1864. So for them to give a large plot to the soldiers who fought in the Battle of Westport says a lot. Now, it all really goes back to Andrew Jackson, the Indian Territory, Indian Removal Act. The uh, Wyandotte tribe was mostly in Ohio uh, some went to Michigan, most came to Kansas, Kansas City, Wyandotte City, and now it's known as Kansas City within uh, Wyandotte County. And you'll see here from the survey, 200 unmarked graves in this area. 200 unmarked graves in this area. Now this is a resting place for people like Dr. Gray Eyes, uh, George Clark, um, Chief Washington, Chief John Happ, who was the last full-blooded Wyandotte chief. So in 1855, the United States government came and said, we are going to accept you as United States citizens if you accept this land. I'm gonna give you another one. To the best of my recognition, recollection and belief, I think that between the years of 1844 and 1855, there were at least 400 internments there, and most of these graves are not perceptible and cannot be identified or even found. Lucy B. Armstrong, 1890, wife of John M. Armstrong. This gives you an idea of, of where we are. Okay, so 1855, the U.S. government offers for them to be citizens. A lot of them take it up, but in 1867, a lot of those who didn't take it up, or the majority who didn't take it up, go down to Oklahoma. So now we have two tribes of the Wyandotte. We have the Wyandotte Nation of Kansas and the Wyandotte Nation of Oklahoma. Now, the Wyandotte Nation of Oklahoma in 1906, 1905, 1906, decides that they want to sell this ground. Well, the Wyandotte Nation of Kansas says, whoa, 
you know, like, let's not get ahead of ourselves here. This is our land. They say, no, it's not your land. You gave it up when you became American citizens. You're not Wyandotte Nation. Well, there was Lida. And Lida was ready to fight. She was a fighter. There were four Connolly daughters. One died very early, uh, but three survived to adulthood. Now, Lida went to the uh, Kansas School of Law, which is now part of UMKC, University of Missouri, Kansas City. And she was the first person in Kansas to, uh, first Native American woman uh, in Kansas to be uh, accepted to the bar. And she took a petition that said, you can't sell this property to the Supreme Court, Kansas. Kansas rejected it. So she appealed to the United States Supreme Court. And here we have Eliza Burton Conley, attorney at law, only woman ever admitted to the United States Supreme Court. She was the first Native American. She was 116th Native American, but she was the first Native American to ever be accepted to argue a case in front of the Supreme Court. And she argued that because they are this nation, they should be federally protected. This land should be federally protected. She lost that case. Now there's a guy by the name Charles Curtis. This is a very important name, Charles Curtis. And he is also part Native American. And he's a senator. And he establishes a uh, legislation that in 1916 makes this a federal park. So a federal park meaning you can't sell it. Okay, so, but before then, we have people wanting to sell. Now, I mentioned that they were tough ladies. Ida Conley, Sarah who died young, Eliza, Lida's mom, Andrew the father, Lida, and Helena. A six foot by eight foot shack on this property right where their ancestors were buried and they would stand around the clock they would live there 24 hours a day stand there around the clock and one would have a musket or shotgun to protect this and they would have no trespassing signs all over the place one of the stories is that Lida actually shot a police officer during this exchange but they stopped and they made their home here so that no one could take it over so they protected the land until that legislation came about so 1916 that legislation comes about and then in 1971 it's listed on the National Registry of Historic Places and then in 2016 National Historic Landmark the National Historic Landmark because it is the final resting place of Eliza Lida Burton Conley first Native American woman to argue a case in front of the Supreme Court and remember when we go back to burying the soldiers from the Battle of Westport we have people here who are still being buried in the middle of the 1900s and they shared their land with the Union troops pretty big statement now her sister, her older sister died in 1958, Helena Conley, floating voice, Wyandotte National Burying Ground, cursed be the villain that molests their graves. She was a fighter till the end, fighter till the end. So on this land, which is now protected and can never be sold, can never be changed, in the middle of Kansas City, Kansas, Lida and her family protected it and saved it and just for folks familiar with Kansas the town of Eudora was named after Eudora Emmons who was the daughter of fish here we see a Hester a fish there Eudora fish was the namesake of the town of Eudora so here, the Huron Indian Cemetery, the Wyandotte National Burial Ground, 
between 400 and 800 bodies, souls resting in the ground. A sacred, sacred place right in the middle of the city. Hope you enjoyed this episode of History with the Indy Akrite. I'll see you next time.